we're going to start in a child's pose. Now I've got this really big pillow here, um, and I'm going to put that underneath me somewhere, like under my chest, under my navel, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere wherever it fits the best. So it's really um, cushy, <laughs> and it sort of holds me just a little bit um, before the point where I, I, my knees are as bent as they can get. So you don't have a big fluffy yoga pillow. A little stack of pillows or a rolled up blanket would work. Or maybe you like your child's pose without any props, <laughs> and that would work too. Now, if this pose just doesn't suit you, for whatever reason, shins, ankles, knees, hips, whatever it is, pick a pose you like. Maybe reclining butterfly or something like that. They'll be kind of a similar situation in the inner thigh. And then you can just join me <laughs> for the poses that happen next, where it won't be so intense. First, like once I get into the pose, my first uh, order of business is just to relax as deeply as possible. So you get in the shape, add the props you need, relax, <sighs> try to let go, and then we'll just pay attention to the breath. And last week I sort of introduced this idea later in the practice, but I'll introduce it now. My favorite breath awareness right now is to pause at the top of the inhale just briefly, and then let the exhale be as soft and gentle as possible. So that that exhale sort of encourages me to relax. And that little pause at the top of the inhale just kind of brings my awareness up so I don't get sleepy, <laughs> which can happen later in the day. two more breaths here. So then 
I'm going to take my time, <laughs> but eventually I'm going to wind up um, resting on my belly. I find that once I've been in child's pose for a while, <laughs> my knees sometimes want to stay bent a little bit longer because it's a kind of a big change to straighten them out right away. So I'm going to sort of do that nice and slow with a little bit of movement. And it's possible, you know, some people's knees are really sensitive or the way the knee is shaped. It might even be nice to do the, all the rest of the um, sphinx that we're going to do or whatever equivalent you choose. Um, you could even put a little blanket or a little pillow under your ankles so there's a slight bend in your knee for the whole thing. Sometimes I find that um, nice, um, especially if I have a sensitive knee day. That little tiny bend just takes the pressure away. Now for the regular, the sort of center point of the sphinx, we'll call it that because there's kind of a spectrum of possibilities here. This right in the center point is the sphinx pose. Um, if I have my elbow a little bit forward of my shoulder, so my shoulder's here, and then forward of that is my elbow, and then a little bit closer together, I find that my shoulder itself, just sort of the bones find the way to touch each other in a way that there's absolutely no muscular tension in my trap, in my um, shoulder, uh, rotator cuff muscles, or in my neck. And this is the most comfortable place to hold the sphinx. If I try to put my elbows in closer, I sort of collapse into it. If they're too wide apart, it feels like it strains those muscles. So that's where I would sort of try to find is that place where it feels like everything here just lets go. And you can always use your hands to position under your head or add a pillow to lean your head into if you like. Higher up would be the sphinx to come up onto the palms of the hands. Now for me, that's as far as my back will bend without lifting my hips off the floor. So there's not really any reason to do this one because it's not that different um, for me. So I, I, the Sphinx is almost identical <laughs> to the seal in my world, but for some people it will be different. And then the lower down version is the crocodile and you can use your arms or a pillow or a blanket for support here, or you just have a little baby, baby back bend, <laughs> a teeny little back bend that you can hang out with, but more of your belly rest on the floor. So once you've picked the one you like the best, we're going to hang with this guy for about two more minutes. We've been here for a little while <laughs> experimenting. So we'll find at home and stay put. So I'm trying to let my legs really relax. I'm trying to let go of every muscle, the muscle in the calves, the back of my thigh, the back of my knee, my glutes, just everything relax. And normally when I do Cobra, I use all those muscles to help support my back. So when I don't use them, I keep them relaxed. I can definitely feel this pose um, in the spine itself. I can feel the slight bit of compression in my lower back, which is why I'm not being too pushy about being in a really big back bend. Just right at the point where I can feel that sensation is where I want to land. one more breath here. And then I'm going to turn this into a frog pose. Now I'm going to use a pillow to help support my um, 
frog so I can be kind of propped up like I am with the Sphinx, but a little more relaxed. And I'm going to start with my left leg up in the, um, the prone frog. So I'm going to just bring that forward however far it wants to go. And then see how much I can kind of stay centered. Some people, because of the shape of the hip joint, might need to stay rolled to the side. So you can do that. And then another option might be to reach back and hold on to your foot of this longer leg. So you can do that version if you like. I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to use a yoga strap to do it. So I'm going to put a strap around my foot and hold the strap over my shoulder. So I'll have to get that done and then I'll come back. to a little breath awareness practice if you've settled in nice. First thing I'm going to do is let go of this leg that I'm holding with the strap. So if you're holding one foot with your hand, you can let go of that guy first. And I'm going to sort of shake the strap off my foot there. Now, I'm going to do a shoulder stretch. Um, I have always called it the sleeping Buddha, but another word I've heard 
or name I've heard is Broken Wing. I don't like that one so much. It sounds horrible. But in any case, we are going to stick our arm out like a wing. And the one I'm sticking out, this is my left leg, so I'm doing my right arm. And I have my palm facing up and my arm just sort of extended slightly lower than the height of my shoulder. I'm gonna use this pillow for my head, and then I'm gonna take this left leg that was in the frog and just flip it all the way over my back and see how much I wanna to roll toward that shoulder. Now for me, I know my shoulder is, is very, <laughs> is constructed quite snugly in the front. So all of the stretch for me is going to be right here on the front and top of my shoulder. So that's what I'm aiming at. And I don't, I cannot roll onto my back without causing trouble for my elbow. So I'm definitely stopping about halfway, like laying on my side. I'm going to use my left hand kind of just as a, like a kickstand almost. But you could also wrap that behind your back. And you can put your left foot on the floor, but I'm actually going to just extend that leg. And that sort of helps hold my hip going in that direction towards where my feet are. So it pulls a little bit of the weight away from my shoulder. So it's just the right amount. I also like my elbow slightly bent. So you can experiment with that. It's just a little more comfortable in my elbow and puts more of the emphasis on my front. Kind of these pec minor and anterior deltoid kind of area at the front of the shoulder. And that area can tighten up when you have your hands held forward like on the computer or in my case the computer and the sewing machine or the, whatever the steering wheel whatever you might bring your arms forward to do an activity um, this area can be an area that sort of tightens up and wants to hold your arm in that position so we're just opening that space up do it kindly <laughs> with a lot of patience if your fingers go numb, you're pinching nerves that, uh, that live between the collarbone and the shoulder blade. So adjust your arm, usually a little bit lower will do the best to kind of open up that channel. Stay with this guy for one more minute. Yogis, take another deep breath. And we're going to come backwards the way we went in. So I'm going to bring this leg back a little. Give myself a moment to sort of oh, really gently move that shoulder back and forth. And then you just want to check in with the arm and your hand and everything. My, there's no, there's not even a remote discomfort in my hand, my elbow, my, you know, I can feel the sort of sense of stretch that I was getting on the front of my shoulder, but it's not unpleasant. So we want to learn from our practice. And if it's unpleasant when you get here, <laughs> second round, then you definitely, you know, when we do the second round, definitely do it differently so that you kind of have an experience to contrast 
the experience you just had. Now, we're going to do the other side, starting with the frog, and I'm going to do this left foot in this version, and then my right leg in the other version. My, my hips lean just slightly towards this uh, leg that's coming behind me, a little bit away from the leg that's out to the side, but not much. So again, the pillow for me up front, up here under my chest is the best spot. But if your hip leans really far, you might even like, put a little blanket or a pillow in front of your hip to kind of lean into so that you can relax a little more deeply in the hip. So decide where your, you know, where the support should go based on how your body feels about life. <laughs> We're gonna stay with this guy for a few minutes here. About four or so. Let's start with a few and then we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. mark here. <laughs> Give or take a few seconds. So check in with yourself. Is it feeling like it's getting better? It's getting more relaxed or just you know, staying in a really nice, interesting place? Or does it feel like you should end the post soon? <laughs> so you're going to end it at some point. You might stick around with me and end it at the very end <laughs> in a couple of minutes. Or maybe it'll be before that. Whatever you think is right. Because we got two breaths left. And then I'm going to let go of this leg that I'm holding onto the strap with first. And as we did last time, I'm going to take my 
arm out to the side and bring my little fro other frog leg over and then adjust the position of my arm until it feels like I've got lots of space between my neck and my shoulder, the right amount of sensation there. Again, I'm going to use this hand like a kickstand and I'm going to keep this leg straight, but you could just as easily just put that guy right on the floor, the foot on the floor. And we'll stay a while. Sure the fingers hips are going numb that there's nothing that feels crummy in your neck We're about halfway more to go but again maybe you decide earlier than I do that it's time to leave the pose that's all right breaths or so. Take a big breath and then with my exhale come on back. Now you could go back to child pose. <laughs> you could do a 
full saddle pose, which is what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to have a lot of pillows involved, but <laughs> I'm going to try to do a saddle. So, the saddle could be a reclining saddle pose where you lie down on your back after you've knelt on the floor. For me, this one's really intense on my knees, so I'm going to attempt just the saddle but without the reclining bit. So. Sit. Ooh, hold on. Just the thought of that made my hamstrings cramp up. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see if I can let myself ease on down into a seated position. This is as far as it's gonna go for now. I'll keep working on it. <laughs> so you can lay back. You can, um, you know, some people. It's, this is a super easy pose to do. For me, it's not. So I'm gonna stay right where I am for now and then slowly try to sink down. So this isn't gonna work, child's pose will work. You can also do a supported bridge pose if you'd like instead, which is normally what I would opt for. Just get uncomfortable <laughs> fabric out from underneath my knees. into this without cramping up my hamstrings. Ooh, that's a little bit better. <laughs> I'm gonna stay for one more minute. And you might love this pose if you want to stay for five, and that would be all right too. <laughs> you can just join me for the rest of what I'm going to do later. <laughs> oh, goodness. I feel like slightly. Um, I think there's a sense of achievement, which is kind of silly. <laughs> I'm working with that inside my brain. But usually this requires like three or four pillows. <laughs> so <laughs> for two pillows to be working, it's kind of great. It <laughs> feels like I'm get, getting a little bit more ease with this pose over done. <laughs> so I'm going to take three more breaths here, so then we'll do, we'll come, come to a seated position when you're ready. <laughs> I like watching myself uh, kind of go through those little feelings of achievement because <laughs> it's, it's very interesting to notice how, like, in, the, in your heart of hearts, how you feel about things, <laughs> to get really honest with yourself. Alright, so I'm going to go forward first, and then I'm going to settle myself down, and then I'll give myself a little kind of shimmy with the legs. because. Yeah, that's an interesting pose. Become very, very aware of all of the attachments of my quadriceps <laughs> right here around the edges of my knee. All right, boobies. So what we're gonna do next can be done as, to start with, um, can be done as a full dragonfly or as a half dragonfly. So, there's kind of three parts to this. The first part is a really simple twist, and I'm gonna leave myself in the full dragonfly for that part. Okay, I'm just turning to one side and pausing there. Then I'm gonna fold over this leg, and I'm gonna come into the half dragonfly for that part, and then this is gonna turn into a swan pose. And I'm gonna let that leg that I bent for the half dragonfly be my swan leg. Now, that's one possible three pose sequence. Another possible three pose sequence is to stay with the full dragonfly for both the first two poses and then do a reclining swan 
where you lay on your back and bring one leg in toward your chest and maybe hold it with the other leg, maybe just hold onto it with your hands. So if you would rather do a swan on your back, then you can consider that. You could also do a half dragon play <laughs> for the first two parts and then do your reclining swan. So there's a couple of little levers of choice, full dragonfly, half dragonfly for one or both poses and then the swan pose upside down or, or uh, you know, belly side down or back side down, whichever way you want to roll. So once you've gotten yourself into one of those options, full dragonfly or half dragonfly, just make sure that you're kind of perched up on the tips of your sit bones so there's not too much strain in the low back. And then pick a side and we're gonna turn toward it. I have little short arms that <laughs> like just my fingertips reach the ground. Some of you will find that your palm will touch down on the ground or you might even have some slack in your elbow. <laughs> I don't, so I'm gonna bring in some pillows <laughs> to provide me with some slack. <laughs> So I can just let my arms rest and relax in the shoulder joint. And this is being held mostly by my spine and my hips are really nice and stable. I'm not leaning in any one direction, weights on the two sit bones fairly evenly. And I'm not being aggressive with the twist, just how far does it want to go? Cool. <laughs> we'll stop there. There are some you know, styles of yoga where you might want the twist to be super intense and you might be like wrapping an elbow around a leg and doing a bind and all those delightful things. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, it fits into other places, but I wonder if it fits into yin. <laughs> yin being that sort of more receptive, accepting, whatever happens, happens <laughs> kind of vibe. Go with the flow kind of vibe. <laughs> the flow being a kind of gentle, slow flow, like continental drift, <laughs> where the body just is allowed to kind of gently adopt a new shape. That's the idea, anyway. We'll stay here for about another minute, and then we'll add the forward bend to it. Two more breaths. And then this is where I'm going to turn this into a forward bend. So I'm going to stay with the leg I'm turning toward, but bring this foot in. And you can bring that foot right up in against the side of your groin or the inner thigh, whatever feels like an appropriate amount. I leave a little space because if I bring it in too close, my thighs come, you know, there's no longer a V. So the dragonfly goes away. I'm just sort of letting myself creep into <laughs> this forward bending shape. Eventually it might be, I might be closer to my leg with my torso, but right now I feel resistance in my lower back and down this kind of side of my hip. So I'm just pausing at the point where I feel the resistance. some breath work, letting myself relax. It may be that that resistance will stay. It may be that it will shift. One of the things I like about yin yoga is that it gives us the space to have a kind of gentle, like meet the body wherever it happens to be approach, right? There's no agenda. Or sometimes it feels like yoga poses have an agenda. Like you've got to put your foot here and your other foot there and your arm here and your hip here. And you've got to have this kind of thing going on. 
this is a little bit different. There's sort of a relationship that's happening where my body and my mind have to work together to be kind to each other. <laughs> We're sticking with the pose for a while. It's a long-term relationship. <laughs> practice demands a more compassionate approach. more minute but of course your minute could be done like this could be a point where you hear the timer go off to take things out of the oven which is fun <laughs> you can come out and move around a little bit or you can go right into the swan uh, and hang out there for a bit or just stay here join me in the swan when we get there whatever in that spectrum works best <laughs> One other alternative. So if you prefer, instead of the swan pose, like the shoelace or the square pose where you bring the legs on top of each other, that targets the same area. So if you'd rather do that one, you could do that one also. That would be another option instead of the swan on your back. Okay, so the way I'm gonna transition is this is gonna be my up front swan leg. So I'm just gonna kind of roll in that direction, stretch my other leg out behind me make some minor adjustments. I'm gonna keep all the pillows <laughs> and just relax. Now you can have this like kind of bent out to the side a little bit instead of straight back if that's better for your hip. Just be mindful of what the right answer is. And you'll know because your knee will be happy, your ankle, your hip, your back. Like all those joints are important. <laughs> so if they all give you permission to stay where you are, stay. <laughs> and if any one of those things says, you know, it would be better if we did this, <laughs> you might go with their idea instead. Whatever wisdom emanates from your deep body, 
You're just shy of that um, as a team. <laughs> I'm going to say for another minute, how's that? And you can suit yourself. <laughs> if it's really pushing your buttons and you're tensing up, it's best to go ahead and get out of the pose. But if it's finally getting to the place where you're like, oh yeah, mm, relaxation is setting in, that's the time to stay. <laughs> we don't have very much longer, just about three or four breaths. So I'm going to basically just swing myself back around towards my um, dragonfly. So first I'm going to kind of lean towards my right hip here and then bring my left one around. <laughs> and then, i got to get the hair out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this dragonfly. I might do a little movement first. I'm rolling up my blanket. One of the downsides to living with furry people is that they leave hair everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if it's theirs or mine. <laughs> Ugh, yuck. <laughs> For whatever reason, it no longer oaks me out. So <laughs> there's that. All right, so I'm now back to my dragonfly shape. And the first part of this dragonfly shape is just twisting. So I'm gonna build myself my little arm rests here. <laughs> <laughs> Come into the twist and hang out. I found myself kind of trying to push with my hip. I'm just kind of backing off of that, letting my hips relax a little more. our bodies will <laughs> kind of lean into things of their own accord. Just have to settle in.
forward, bringing this leg around for my half dragonfly here, and just going until I feel resistance, pausing with the resistance. Sometimes resistance doesn't happen until my chest meets my thigh, which is pretty close on this side, <laughs> pretty close to that, but there's a little tiny bit of resistance right in these muscles in my lower back, and I've learned to listen to those very nicely and kindly. They often have a lot to say. Reminder, our body speaks to us in one language, sensation. And uh, because some of the times we are sort of willfully <laughs> ignore <laughs> the language that our body is trying to send us, the communication that our body is trying to send us. Sometimes because we have to, we have to ignore it for a time being to get through life. But because that relationship can be a little bit tricky, right? The, the, we, we have to over time and over the course of our lifetimes, we build this kind of understanding of what sensations mean and how some sensations we might want to kind of explore a little further. Some sensations are definitive edges of things like stop right there or things are going to get bad. Sometimes the sensations are confusing. So we're building a relationship with the body. So, you know, my relationship that I've built up with these muscles in my lower back indicates to me that I should never try anything with them. <laughs> they, they will make me rue the day. <laughs> so I'm much more respectful of that sensation than I might be somewhere else that, where I have a different relationship. And similarly, you're building the relationship with your body, understanding the sensations you're getting, and you should make your best choices. With all of that, we're about halfway through here, so we'll stay a couple more minutes. take two breaths. The second breath I'm going to bring myself out on that inhale. And then this is going to turn into my swan pose. I'm going to come around toward this leg. And again, whatever it was that you did last time, you can do again this time. relax. 
once you get into a shape you like. of our last minute here. Two more breaths. tonight's practice. Um, I'm going to do a reclining butterfly pose, which often I start with. So it's fun to me to kind of um, take a pose that I normally put in one place in my practice and put it somewhere else and see what happens. So I'm going to invite you to that option. And then the other option might be maybe you would like to do an inversion for whatever reason. So you might do like legs up the wall or um, lie down and put your legs up over the edge of the couch or up over a chair to kind of give you um, 
an elevated leg, or you can even like build up a little pillow mountain <laughs> and like throw your legs over the pillow mountain. I've done that many times as well. If you have a lot of pillows, you can do that one. So I'm gonna actually put this pillow underneath my knees. So it's a very supported butterfly. And then I've got a little, um, kind of like a blanket pillow for my head. And then when I'm done with the butterfly, I'm just gonna slide into Shavasana. And that's sort of the idea. So pick something that for you feels really relaxing. And when you're ready, you can just transition right into a final relaxation. Do this for probably about five minutes <laughs> and then slide out into Shavasana for five or six or seven minutes, somewhere in that range. <laughs> See if you guys are still with me at the end. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I wouldn't blame me if you just go right off to bed either. <laughs> so I've got this little butterfly set up. I'm just going to make one little adjustment so that my pillow is a little bit higher up the edge. So that feels a little nicer in the hips there to me. Bring my feet in a little closer. Let's try to find the right balance here. That feels good. I'm just going to hang with that. And I'm going to do a mudra while I'm hanging with that, which you, we might recognize this mudra like as the like A-OK -okay symbol, <laughs> which it kind of does, actually. <laughs> like, the longer I hang out with that mudra, the more OK I actually feel. So I'll give you the option of trying out the A-OK -okay mudra or the chin mudra as it's more um, properly known. When I get to Shavasana, I'm going to drop that, right? I'm just going to hold it while I'm in this pose for the next few minutes. The mudras are subtle. Now, in the old way of thinking about mudras, back in the Middle Ages, um, mudras were, like, it, it means a lock or a seal. And so it was any position that we would put the body in where it felt like there was a sort of um, energy exchange or a kind of um, connection point. So the thumb and the index finger together, right? That sen sensitivity in those two ends of our fingers kind of create a relationship, almost feels sort of electromagnetic a little bit, a little sticky. It's not, but it has a a lot of sensitivity there. And that could also be a position that you do with the body. So this whole thing, maybe because my feet are touching, it might be that this could whole thing could be a mudra, really. So just kind of notice what you feel and let that sort of judgmental part of your brain you know, hang out with it, but do it anyway. <laughs> Don't let it rule the show, because sometimes it's okay to suspend your disbelief briefly and see what happens. Just be part of it. for about five or so more breaths.
extra go with my hands first. See if I experience anything in particular, and then I'm gonna let my legs stretch out. And I'm gonna leave the pillow there because that's really comfy for me, but if you wanted to, you could add a pillow or take one out depending on how you set up your butterfly. If you were doing legs over the pouch or up the wall, you might want to bend your knees and hang out that way for a while and then come into your final relaxation. And then just be wherever the practice brought you. So when I hold this little mudra with my fingertips, initially there's the sensation of the fingers touching, which is interesting and kind of fun. Then a little bit of muscle fatigue sets in, and there's like a little bit of a shake. Like I can feel the finger shaking, and then that resolves itself. And it's almost like my inner awareness has a dimmer switch that is gently turned up, right? So it just gets a little brighter, a little brighter, a little lighter, a little kinder feeling. And then now I have released the mudra and I'm just sort of floating in that nice, kind, light state. Now that's not to say that's how it should feel, that's just what I experienced. So just be wherever you are. Let yourself rest.
and notice your breath again. for joining me for some very hippie yin. <laughs> Let's take a nice big breath together. And a big deep sigh. Namaste, loves. Thank you.